Welcome back, everyone. The figure skating season is gearing back up, and after a much needed rest, I am ready for all the glitz and glory. Yes, let us enjoy another season of figure skating drama for our mamas. Even during the off season, there was still so much going on in figure skating. Starting with the fact that the International Skating Union, good old ISU, somehow found a pair and decided to continue the ban on the Russian skaters. Now, there are two schools of thoughts regarding this decision. There are those who believe that without the Russian the Russians competing, figure skating is not competitive. While there are those who believe that without the Russian skating, figure skating is now healing. I personally, I lean towards the latter group. You guys know I love the drama for our mamas. However, even I had reached a point where everything with the Russians was just too much. There was this oppressive, depressive air to figure skating that made watching the women's portion of the sport just too hard. Regard reading the endless articles about the dietary practice of these children, hearing about their training regimen, the endless injuries, it all became too much for me given how young the people involved in these stories were. The worst for me was watching all of these powerful adults turn on children, blaming them for everything, taking no accountability. This was especially the case with Aliona Kostanaya. This was just a child who just wanted to go to the Olympic. And the way they humiliated and belittled her, it just broke my heart. Then we also had to watch Daria Ushasheva break apart on national television. That just hurt my spirit. By the time we got to the Olympic, I was so emotionally drained that I just wanted it to be over. However, we know things only got worse. I took no pleasure in seeing a 15-year-old Camilla Valieva implode because the adults around her abused and drugged her. Having Alexandra Chusefa push her body beyond her limit only because she believed that she could be a champion if she ignored her injury and did what her coaches told her, only for us to watch her crumble on international television when that dream was ripped away from her, for me, that still and will always remain one of the darkest moments in figure skating history. And let's not even forget the hopelessness and emptiness that Anna Shabakova literally showed us after reaching the peak of her sport. She felt nothing. For me, none of it was worth it. You know, even with the trauma and drugs set aside, the skating itself was also not worth it. I personally am not a fan of the Danielle Glykenthal aesthetic. And knowing the cost of the Iteri to Beretsi technique, it's also a pass for me. So because everything that comes from or with Team to Beretsi in Russian skating came from that particular spot of unpleasing aesthetic and like injury inducing technique, I really just wanted it to be done with. And so I personally am happy that figure skating is going to get one more year to heal without all of that. Now, I'm also looking forward to what may be, may be a fair and definitely a drug-free clean year of figure skating. Fair is questionable, but at least drug-free, we know we're going to get that. And that to me, that's important. I believe in clean sport. Now, having said that, I am not looking forward to some of these programs that I know we're going to have to watch all season long. Now, the rhythm dance for this year is 80s. And part of me wish that the women also had to follow like theme like the ice dance do and that they could get to do the 80s. Now I know 
I know we're going to get an endless number of flash dance and footloose and dirty dancing and Michael Jackson and Madonna programs. We already know this. However, the 80s is such a musically fun period that I wish the women could also do the 80s but just do it right. I mean, personally, I have a few 80s gem that I would like to see the women perform. So this is my fantasy 80s women's program, if we could have it. So starting in the U.S., I want to start with Miss Ember Glenn. Now, we know how much Miss Glenn just loves her TikTok emo songs. Despite the fact that she has all this ice presence and all of this power, this girl just loves these dreary emotional songs. But for my 80s theme, I'm giving Miss Glenn, Run DMC, and Aerosmith, Walk This Way! Talk this way. I'm sorry. Only Miss Glenn has the attitude for this song. And I honestly think this would be a TikTok moment for her if she were to do it. Um, For Isabel Levito, we're going with a little Miss Houston. How will I know if he loves me? This song is from the start of Whitney Houston's career. It's youthful. It's joyous. It's happy. I feel like Isabel's program tend to be very mature and very aging. And I would just love to see her do something just joyous and youthful. Um, For Lindsay Thorne Green, last season was not her season. And I would want to use this season to like sort of do a reset. But sadly, Lindsay can be very forgettable as a skater sometimes. So I want to give her something memorable like um, Joan Jett. I love rock and roll. Yes, just a little something, 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 baby. I love that song. I think this would be a statement piece for Lindsay and it would just announce her and give her a sort of identity. Lastly of the American ladies, Brady Tunnell, I'm going with Bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer. Listen, I'm not being sarcastic, but something gritty with a little bit of fight to it, I think is what Brady needs to get herself through this season. No more of the across the pond, all of that. Some living on a prayer. Let's get it, Brady. Now, staying in the north, we can head over to Canada, but they only have one one woman that has international experience, which is Mad- uh, Madeleine Chazar. So I'm giving her something. Umphy. I'm giving her Scarface. Push it to the limit. Uh, uh. And honestly, Madeline is going to have to push it to the limit this season because her Canadian competitors are coming for her. Now, from the north to Japan... I want to first jump for joy at the fact that Wakaba Higuchi is coming back. Thank you, skating gods. And to show my appreciation, I am giving Miss Wakaba the one and only. Shaka Khan! Ain't nobody love me better. Yes. With Wakaba's maturity and power, this song would definitely hit the spot. Now, for Kari Sakamoto... I love the way that Kari has been given the time, the space, and the opportunity to grow as a skater. I love the way that her career is shaping as a multi-season career. That, to me, is everything. That is the growth that I love seeing in skating. And because of that, I want to give Kari this song that only she could do. And that is Rick James, Super Freak. Super freak, she's super freaky. Yes, you know the move that Kari had in her Matrix program where she did the head cutter to the judges? I want super freak, super freak, she's super freaky to be playing in the back and then there's Kari cutting off the judges' head. Ah! That to me would be a moment. Um, For my Mia Horror, a little engine that could, she really started out last season strong. I really thought she was in it to win it, but... It didn't quite go that way. But I feel like she tends to pick like these really calm, really classical types, lyrical types of program. And I would love to see Mai do like a complete 180. So I want to give her something fun. I want to give her Beetlejuice, Dale, Dale, Misa Dale. 
the banana boat song this song is so fun and just so opposite to what i imagine my being that i really feel like this would be an opportunity for her to just grow um as for wink um Renka watanabe mm, i also want to do something fun with Winka. i want to do like little shop of horror dentist it, guys google it the dentist song in little shop of horror so much fun um you, you know i think like rinka could really go into the personality of that now for the korean women for me the korean women have beautiful jump technique they have nice skating skills but they have very little personal identity on the ice and this as a lot of people have already said is because they're all packaged after yuna kim now if we're gonna copy anyone quinn yuna is definitely a great choice however an imitation is still just an imitation and i really feel like these young korean women need to take their skating to the next level by finding their own identity so starting with our reigning world silver medalist high and lee I'm giving her Madonna like a prayer. Just like a prayer, I want to take you there. We could even have a, a, a part where she's down on her knees in front of the judge doing her little cross dance. Listen, High End could give this life. I see it. I see it. I can see a character coming out of High End with just like a prayer. Um, then for Yelin Kim, I want something light and sweet. She really had a difficult just up and down season. Again, we thought she was in it to win it and then it just kind of imploded on her. So I want to be like, it had to be you. You know from when Harry met Sally, it had to be you. Something just sweet and light and fun. And again, this will give her a chance to grow a bit of personality. Then we have Cheon Ken. One of the Korean ladies that I feel like doesn't need to grow a personality. She had a powerhouse of a debut. She comes across as being a little firecracker. And because she's a firecracker, I want to give her Danger Zone from Top Gun. Hi, we're to the Danger Zone. I'm sorry. I feel like Cheon could eat this song and leave no crumb. I want to see her do that. Then we had like Suyon Wee. She left little to no impression on me this season. And that is why I want to give her an iconic song. You have to have a little something in you to deliver this song. And that is the one and only Prince. When dove cry, maybe I'm just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Like you have to come with it if you are going to do a song like that. And that I feel will give her that lasting impression that i don't see from her so far finally you young there is only one choice cindy lauper ju girls just want to have fun again you has had a couple of difficult years she was once the promised chosen south korean girl and just through ups and downs it's just been very difficult for her and so i want her to enjoy skating again and girls just want to have fun is just that kind of song now from south korea to europe i want to start with luna hendrix i'm also giving luna a prance and i'm giving her i would die for you mm, mm, mm. Listen, Prince is mature, sensual, sexy, just everything wrapped up in one. And we know that Luna can do show sexy, but can she do mature, funky, sensual, sexy? Can she really take ownership of that and give us something more? I want to see it. Then we have like Anastasia Gabanova. I'm going to go with um, Aha, take on me. Take on me, take me. Oh, I love that song. I love that video. Google it. It's a moment. Um, Last season, Bollywood was not my favorite. I've made that amply cleared. So I think like this kind of rock, like rock punk number would really bring Gabanova to life. I think this is something she probably could pull off better than she did Bollywood. And lastly, Ekaterina um, Karakova. First off, I really pray that Ekaterina has better tights this season. Don't make me start a GoFundMe if I see you with those fugly tights again this season. Please. 
But anyway, I want to give Ekaterina Wham, wake me up before you go, go. Come on, let's be honest. Ekaterina has such a fun personality that she could literally make this song a viral moment if they gave her the right program. So this is my list of 80s programs that I would just love to see the women perform this season. I know it's not going to happen, but let me wish. But what about you guys? Do you have a decade of music that you would like to see the women's perform? Well, let me know in the comments below.